What's up, y'all? It's Customized Key, and I'm back with another video for y'all. So I know you're probably wondering from the title, what is she gonna be talking about in this video? Academically, I did not feel that I was prepared for college. There are a lot of things that I wish I knew, I wish that I had have gone over while I was in high school that may have contributed to me being a lot more successful my freshman year of college. In high school, I was very smart. I was on honor roll all four years of high school. I was in like the top 20, I wanna say. I don't even remember what my ranks were, but I know for a fact that I was in the top 20 consecutively. My GPA when I graduated high school was like a three, four, three, five, something like that. And high school was easy to me. I didn't even try when I went to high school. And with that type of mindset, I just thought that college wasn't going to be that bad because I was doing so well. Well, I was wrong. My freshman year was some trash and I'm here to give y'all a little bit of insight on the things that I that I experienced that I wish I had have known academically that would have made me a stronger student my freshman year. Kind of just getting into what I felt I should have known. Um, in high school, I had the majority of my classes were either honors or AP. Especially my senior year. My senior year, I had all honors classes. I had all, I had AP, I had two AP classes and I was also doing a bridge program. So a bridge program is where you go to a college or university, you take classes there for free and you get the credits so that when you go to another school, those credits will transfer in and you won't have to take so many classes. So on the top of my AP classes, I was doing this bridge program. I did it at Roosevelt University and I was taking English courses there. I knew that going into college, I wanted to be an English major. I had plans on going to law school and English majors just have a smoother transition into law school simply because there's a lot more reading and writing and the course load for reading and writing that an English major does is almost equivalent to that of a first year law student. So it would have been a really smooth transition into what I had planned for my life. Now, looking back on that, I, first of all, I had been told that based on my ACT scores that I had tested out of WRA. Now, for those of you who don't know, WRA is a university requirement. There's no way you can test out of a university requirement. So as, if, if as a freshman, someone tells you that, oh, you tested out of this university requirement, more than likely, they're lying to you. The only thing that you can really test out of is maybe like a math class or a foreign language requirement because I know that a lot of universities have tests that are catered to measure that. So let's just say if I am a English major and I'm only required to go up to like, you know, algebra, geometry, statistics as a math requirement for my degree, and I took AP calculus and I can do calculus, I would take this math test and it would show you that I'm at a calculus standing as far as my math is concerned, then they're gonna say, okay, she, there's no point in us having her go through these university requirements as far as math is concerned because the girl can do calculus. So she's tested out of that. Math is something that can always be tested out of. Foreign language, if you know the language, that, that will be obvious. Um, they will ask you to do things like have a conversation, translate, They'll ask you to do things like listen and respond, things of that nature. So some of those things can be tested out of. Um, I wish that in my AP courses, I was taught how to do things like annotated bibliographies. I wish I was taught how to cite in like APA format. MLA is cool, but once you get to college, there are some courses where they're like, we don't do MLA in here, we do APA. When I got to college, I didn't know what that was. But thankfully, I was able to go and, you know, get resource help from the writing learning center that they have on campus. And I was able to make that adjustment. However, if I had to learn that in high school, I think I would have lot, I think I would have been a lot better off. Also, too, I think if I had taken my AP classes a little more seriously, that would have been great. And I only say that because AP classes are literally college classes in high school that you can get college credit for and it's free. So that means that if I had to pass, if I had to pay more attention in class and just been more focused on passing my AP test, 
once I got to college, I could have used those AP credits to take care of some of my requirements as far as my degree was concerned, and I wouldn't have had to pay for them. However, because I didn't do that, when I went to college, I'm taking this class. The class is like maybe four or $500 per credit hour, and this English class is four credits, Four credits, and we're going to say $500 per credit hour. I'm paying $2,000 for this class when I could have paid attention in high school, passed this AP test, got the same credits, took care of the same responsibility for free. I That's one thing that I really do stress to young people. Please take your AP courses a lot more seriously because that's literally free college credits. It's literally like free bands. Like It, it really doesn't get any better than that. It doesn't. I wish I just would have had more experience with being required to read a lot more. Um, yes, we had class books that we were reading, class books that we were going through, but we weren't really required to read more than like a chapter a night. And in college, that's just not realistic. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of people have a hard time adjusting to because they're not used to that. I had one class, I had to read 100 pages a night. Like granted, this class only met like twice a week. But before every class, I had to have those 100 pages read. And it was a lot for me, considering the fact that I had three other classes that I was having to do reading material for. So I think that if I was a little more accustomed to doing that in high school, that I would have been okay. I feel like, you know, if I was required to write longer papers in high school that I would have had a better experience when I got to college. I feel like if my teachers stressed the importance and actually how to properly format a thesis statement that I would have been a lot better off because to be honest with y'all, a lot of college is writing papers. A lot of college is doing research, finding out new stuff that your professors don't know, writing about it in a paper, and reporting that back. They want to know where did you get your sources from. I wish I would have known about scholarly journals. I didn't know anything about that. If y'all don't know what I'm talking about, go look these things up. Know how to find scholarly journals. Learn how to cite these journals. Learn how to cite magazines, how to cite books, how to cite websites, how to cite, you know, how to, how to do in-text citations for books and songs and quotes and things of that nature. Learn how to do these things ahead of time because they will make your life in college a lot more simple. Now, yes, there are websites like, you know, Easy Bib and all of that stuff like that. That's another thing. I wish I would have learned how to do an annotated bibliography in high school because these are all things that I struggled with when I was in college just because I didn't have anybody to teach me. I didn't have anybody to say, well, this is what you're going to need to know. This is what you're going to need to do. All of this stuff isn't new. Annotated bibliographies are not new. But knowing how to do them, the, the format changes, you know, from teacher to teacher. You have to figure out how to write in a way that is satisfying to your professor. And they may or may not specify what that is. Is it fair? Not necessarily, but just for that reason, you should be going to their office hours. Office hours are basically like, you know, the equivalent of going after school to see a teacher about a project or a paper or an assignment that you may need clarity on, that you may need help on. Um, office hours are the difference between people who have that 2.4 at the end of the semester and it gets rounded up to a 2.5 or it gets rounded to a 2.0. In college, I wish somebody had told me, like, there's no B+. Plus, there's no C. Like, no. It's A, B, C, or D. It's either a 1 point, a 1, 5, a 2, 0, oh, a 2, 5, a 3, 0, oh, a 3, 5, or a 4 point. So if I got a 3, a three 2, you know, that's, that's getting rounded to a 3.0. Oh. Like, that's what the, my grade is going to be for that class. I could have a 2.49. And some professors will be like, it's not a 2.5. So you're getting a 2 point in this class. Even though you are at that point right there. But going to office hours, having introduced yourself to your professor, could be the great difference in between getting that 2 point and getting that 2.5. So that's also knowing how to, you know, just finesse that. I know a lot of times people say stuff like C's get degrees. That's true, but C's don't get you in a, in a master's school. You know, C's don't get you into grad programs and C's don't get you letters of recommendation. So yes, C's get degrees, but 
it doesn't pay off in the long term. It gets you your degree, but it's not 100% the best. I wish I knew or at least had somebody to tell me about how to like or teach me how to properly take notes. Um, when you're in a lecture hall class, you're not that the professor might not necessarily be using a PowerPoint. They might just be in there talking to you for two hours and everything that they talk about is going to be on the exam. I wish I had to learn ways to finesse that. I know some of my friends, they will go to class and they will record the whole class. And then when it was time for them to study, they will put on headphones and listen to that recording and take notes from that recording. And I just honestly think that that was bomb. You should be spending at least four to five hours minimum studying per week when you're in college. It is just no way to grasp all the information at one time. So learn how to study. If that means that you make index cards to go over the information, if that means that you are recording your lectures when you go to lecture and replaying them back, if that means that you are linking up with people to compare notes, to talk about some of the topics that y'all went over in class to make sure that you have a thorough understanding of that, do that. I wish, like I said, I wish somebody had told me to do that when I was in college because my freshman year would have been a lot better. My freshman year was rough, y'all. It was rough. I'm not even going to hold you up. One, I was in classes that I should not have been in as a freshman. Two, I took classes that I ended up not even needing for my major. And three, I was, I was, I, I'm going to just put it like this. They finessed me. I, I got finessed my freshman year. My classes were hard. Every single last one of them. Also, too, if you're taking a foreign language, stick to what you know, okay? Stick to what you know. Because I'm like, oh, I would love to take French. I think that's a great language to learn. No. I knew Spanish. I knew it real good. And I should have just stuck to taking that. While I was in college, I ended up taking it anyway and, and using Spanish as my foreign language requirement, but I didn't have to take that French class that I knew nothing about. I didn't know about dropping classes. I'm going to talk, I'm going to do a video about that too, but knowing how to finesse your freshman year will be the video that will follow this one. Um, so stay tuned for that, but I wish, I, I really hope that you all are paying attention to some of the things that I'm saying in this video because... These things will give you an idea of what you should be preparing yourself for when you go to college. So just a quick rundown. Again, annotated bibliographies. Look that up. Learn how to take notes. Learn how to create positive study habits for yourself. Learn how to cite in MLA and APA format. There is a Purdue OWL website. They have a really good layout. Look into them. Uh, go to office hours, learn how to operate in a large lecture hall, talk to your people who went to college before and ask them for tips on, on finessing having a lecture class. Use and look up study groups, quizlets, um, different tutoring opportunities, different resources on campus. See if your school has learning centers for certain subjects because those will definitely help if you find that you need a resource to help you develop your writing, to help you develop your strength in any core area. Take your AP classes seriously. They will save you money. C's get degrees, but they do not get you into grad school. And if you know a foreign language, please, please, please stick to what you know. Practice writing long papers. If you are an educator and you are watching this, require your students to write five to six page papers. Require them to write eight to 10 page papers. Allow them the creative freedom to address a topic. Give them papers where they say, you're gonna come up with your own topic and this is what you're gonna do with it. Um, also to just please, please, please take heed to everything that I'm saying in this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I hope that everything that I've said in this video turns out to be useful to you and that it helps make your freshman year a lot smoother than mine. <laughs> I hope that you will share this video with someone who you feel that needs to hear these things. I have a lot more videos coming for you guys later. So comment, rate, and subscribe. And I will catch y'all on the flip side. Booyah!